Uh, Paul, Youth Development Week this week. Um, obviously, we have Gabe, Jealous and Charters in our squad. Really good for the lads. Yeah, no, brilliant. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I think it's important that we do highlight um, what a great job that the AFL Academies do. Um, everybody wants to talk about Cat One Academies and what, what they all bring to the game. Um, and I think everybody forgets that all the football league clubs have academies as well and they don't have to be Cat One uh, to be doing a good job. So, you know, I've been involved with the England teams. I, I realised how important it is um, that these lads are all getting opportunities at first team level uh, because there's a difference between playing in academy football and then stepping out onto a, a first team pitch. But there's so many players are getting opportunities, so many players who are actually who, who've progressed onto the England senior team and, and the other um, home, na home nation teams as well. They're getting minutes in the EFL that's benefiting the national teams and um, that can only be good for, for the whole of the, uh, the, the UK in terms of our football. And seeing those local lads in our squad at the minute must give the academy players a real incentive to to do well absolutely you know I think you, you look at the lads who've been involved in our first team um, the ones you've mentioned but then you also look at people like Jared Branthwaite and James Trafford and Dean Henderson who all started off at Carlisle United in the in the youth system um, some of them got sold earlier and moved on which is th that's perfectly normal with the way the e uh, EPPP system works but it's, there's a real value to it. And that's why it's important that the academies are, are set up properly and are run properly. Um, and, and we're hoping that the change in our academy will give it a boost and, and give it a, a, a leg up to improve and to move forward. And hopefully in years to come, we've got even more players who have come up through our own system who are representing the first team. And to other things, how's the week of training been this week? Yeah, it's um, it, it's gone well. Um, but, you know, there's there's... Most weeks we're saying training's gone well. It's it's not about it's not about training well and then not performing on a Saturday. It's about going and performing. Um, I'd much rather we were absolutely hopeless in training during the week, but we we'll go and perform on a Saturday, and that's the challenge that we've got between now and the end of the season. We've got eight games left, and we have to make sure we finish on a positive note. Um, there hasn't been many positives this season. Um, just recently, we've we've. Um, We've had slightly better performances in periods of games, but we have to finish on a high. We've got to make sure we go and get some results. And what a great place to start this weekend in front of a, a really good home crowd again. We need to start giving our home supporters something better to take away with them. Um, and hopefully we'll get that this week against Stevenage. Obviously nobody happy with the form at the moment, but if you sort of, is it getting to the point where eight games left, you maybe give the players a target for those eight games? Well, the target always is to win the next one. That's that's the target, and that's what we're trying to do. You know, we've we 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 know the situation we're in. We know it's it's looking really really dire. Um, for me, everybody's written us off anyway. Everybody said it's over, and we're and we're down. So, just play with some freedom. Go and go and show what you're really about. Because I don't think we've done that. I don't think the players have have been able to go and show what they're really like and go and play with that freedom and go and express themselves. And that's what we want. We want them to go and do that. So the challenge is to win the next game. We wanted that at Shrewsbury, um, and although we had lots of possession and dominated the possession stats, they count for nothing for me. You know, I just want to. I want to try and win games of football. I want us to. To, to show a better side of us than we have been doing and that's what we've got to do come Saturday. Another week of training for Georgie and JJ, how are they getting on? Yeah, I mean Georgie's uh, doing really well and we're really pleased with, with the way he's going. As for JJ, um, we, we've still not seen him yet. Um, he decided he needed another week to get confidence in his calf training at Rotherham um, so he stayed there and he's their player and we, we, we're governed by them unfortunately. Um, so we're hopefully going to get some news about him um, before next week and, and with a bit of luck he'll be coming back into us but JJ's has been a really frustrating one not just for him but for us as well because we really pushed the boat out to get him in at the end of the August um, summer transfer window um, and we haven't you know we've had him for part of a game at Akron and part of a game at Stevenage and um, that's been a real frustration because it's been it's been one of a few areas where we fell short this season and um, hopefully we can get him back get Georgie available and then we'll see where we go from there 
Is there a targeted game for Georgia yet or is it still too early for that? Uh, we're thinking over the Easter weekend, um, probably the Monday, if anything, um, to, for him to be involved. But we'll see how his training goes. We're, we're managing the, the workload. He's, he's looking strong and feeling good about it. So we'll wait and see. Um, you know, we, we had a we had a date in mind for JJ to return, and that that got scuppered. Um, we were hoping that Georgie would have been fit earlier, but uh, he hasn't been. So we've just got to um, got to manage him properly. Hope that he's available for a game coming up very soon. And if he is, then let's see what he's all about. Any other injury concerns? Uh, no, no, nothing from last week. Everybody's trained for over the week, um, so we had no concerns after last weekend. So it's um, a similar group to choose as we had um, from the Shrewsbury game. Obviously, we're missing Sean Green because he's, avail he's un um, unavailable because of international duty. But again, we knew that, so the preparation hasn't been disrupted. Um, and we've just got to make sure the players who, who are selected go and perform. Stephen, on Saturday they've had a really good season, but they've just slipped out of the playoff positions recently. Yeah, they've had um, a little bit of a dodgy run. Um, they've had some tough games. Um, so we know what to expect from a Stevenage side. We know that they'll, that they'll want to swarm all over us. They'll want to make it as difficult as possible. Um, they are doing this season what we really hoped we were going to do, uh, but we've fallen way short of them. Um, and if I'm honest, I think there was a big gulf between the two sides last season as well. You know, they showed by gaining automatic promotion that they were ahead of us. So we're expecting it to be a tough game. But I'm also expecting our players to go and relish the challenge and go and stand up and show our, our supporters at home what we can really show. Jamie Reid away on international duty and Pierre Gianni uh, suspended. They're both big players for them. Yeah, they are. Well, they have been this season. Um, but they've got other players who can come in. Van Kooten's come in and done really well for them. Um, they've got strikers who can come into the team. So, you know, w we still expect it to be very similar to what it was um, in their last game. Um, it's about us. I keep saying it. It really is about us. And we know that we haven't done enough this season. The league table reflects that. The goals for, the goals against column reflect that. But we can't change that now. The only thing we can actually affect it is, is these last eight games. The first one being Stevenage at home. And I really hope that the players are in the right, right state of mind, the right physicality, the right positivity to be able to go and put on a performance. Just last one, we got the one Carlisle, one community uh, incentive. So cheaper tickets and things, lots going on around the stadium. It'd be good to give... Make that a, a really good day for everyone. It would, yeah. I mean, the supporters have turned up in their numbers all season. They've been absolutely outstanding. Um, our results and sometimes our performances haven't um, haven't paid that back. Um, hopefully this weekend they'll get something back in terms of the reduced prices, get something back in terms of the entertainment that's going on around the ground. But the way I look at it, this football club has moved forward because of the way that the players have gone about it on the pitch. Last season especially, we got such a huge lift from that, the whole football club did. So, you know, when it comes to um, the way the, the hospitality is going, the way the commercials all booming, the way the shop sales are all booming, that's because of the players. Now, if we want to keep it, we need the players to understand that, that they have a responsibility to go and perform. I have a responsibility as the manager because all the blame comes to me. But I'm really hoping that this weekend we can put on a performance that keeps all of our home fans smiling, sends them home happy, which they haven't done enough this season. And if we do that, then hopefully they'll turn up again. Thank you.